Adobe just released a new AI landscape masking tool inside Lightroom that will allow you to mask and make local adjustments much quicker. So let's run it through a couple photos in the water and check out how this new feature works. All right, so here in Lightroom, we have a couple photos from a recent trip to Raja Empat. So I'm gonna click on that first one, go over to the develop tab, and this is just a photo of an enemy and an enemy fish with some nice coral. And I'm gonna go straight over to the masking feature, which is this circle in the top bar. Click on that. And if you're familiar with masking, you'll see all the regular options with the addition of a new landscape option. So I'm gonna click on that and it'll detect the subjects in the scene fairly quickly. And you'll see that we have two options, water and vegetation. Now in the few underwater shots that I've ran through this, coral usually comes up as vegetation. And in this instance, the anemone does as well, but that's okay. So we're gonna hit vegetation as well as water. And we're gonna make sure that the create two separate masks option is selected as well. Hit create mask. And you'll see over here in this bar, we have two separate masks, one for the water and one for the vegetation or the coral and the anemone. So from here, I'm gonna click on the water mask. And if you don't see your red overlay, you can either check or uncheck this to see it. And then I'm gonna go down and here you can make any adjustments that you want to specifically the water or whatever is selected in red. So maybe I wanna bring up the exposure, mess around with the white balance, maybe make it a little bit bluer. And I think that's fine. I'm not really gonna mess around with the color of the water too much, but you'll also see that if I recheck this overlay, that it's detected some of the parts of the photo that isn't water. So to fix that, we can just click on our mask and head down to this minus button. And we're going to minus brush. We're gonna take our brush and just brush over all the parts that we don't want selected. If you find you're having trouble brushing away some of the overlay or some of the mask, you can make sure that auto mask is unselected. So there we go. And if we hover over that brush, we can see all of the mask that we've subtracted from the original water mask. And if we do before and after, you can see that we've only made adjustments to the water. Awesome, so then we'll go into the second mask and the same thing. I'm gonna uncheck this so I can see what I'm working with. And maybe I just wanna make that pop a bit, so we'll increase the exposure. And I don't know, we'll do a little bit of clarity. And I think that looks fine. Again, you can see in the mask that it's selected a little bit of the coral in the back and maybe I don't want that. So we're gonna do the same thing, minus brush and brush that away. Now let's say that it didn't select something that you did want selected. You can do the same thing, but with the plus icon and select brush or any of these other options, but I like to use the brush for small additions and you can take that brush and you could brush anything in. And that'll be included in your mask. So now with both masks and local adjustments done, our photo has just changed a little bit. We didn't make too many adjustments but it's a good demo of what this can do for a fully underwater image. And then outside of the masks, we can make global adjustments as we wish, still with contrast, exposure, highlights, shadows, anything that you want. All right, let's move on to the next photo, which is a split shot. And we're gonna start by just cropping this a little bit. Something like that. And again, we're gonna go straight into the masking and hit landscape. All right, so once it's detected the subjects in the scene, you'll see we have sky, mountains, water, and natural ground. So again, we're gonna select all of these and make sure that it's creating four separate masks for each subject. Create mask and you'll see all the masks in the sidebar. Cool, so let's start with the mountain. 
So before I go into making local adjustments for the exposure, I can see right off the bat that some of these masks have selected parts of the image that I really don't want. So the mountain mask has a little bit of the water, this boat, and I don't wanna make changes to those when I make changes to the mountain. So just like before, I'm gonna go in here, minus brush, and I'm just gonna brush away the parts that I don't want. Cool, so now we only have the mountain selected. Now it's really cool that it was able to detect the mountain as a whole object. However, it did not detect the trees or the vegetation on the mountain. But say I wanted to make local adjustments to just those trees. What I'm gonna do is go into the mountain mask, hit minus, and then go to the select landscape option. It's gonna bring us back to this original masking options and I'm going to minus the natural ground from the mountain and hit create mask. Now it's created a whole separate mask that's the mountain minus the natural ground and it's just selected the trees. So now I have four separate masks for the sky, the trees on the mountain or the island, the water and just the natural ground. And again, this has a little bit the part of the image that I don't want, so I'm gonna mask that away. Cool, so we'll start with maybe making the trees on this mountain pop a bit. So I'm gonna up the shadows, maybe up the exposure just a little bit, not by much. And then maybe go into the natural ground. Also bump the shadows up a bit and then maybe go to the water. Here I can increase the exposure of the water. There's not much going on down there, so there's not much to see. But, so I might dehaze it a little bit. And then maybe go into the sky, bring down the exposure a little bit. I don't know, you could do whatever you want with all these masks, um, but for now I'm just gonna leave it like this. You can see that you can make local adjustments to all these masks much more quickly than you were before when you had to select each subject manually. All right, so I hope this new feature is useful for you in your underwater photography or your topside photography. And if you have any questions, you can drop them down in the comments below or reach out to us at ikelite at ikelite.com.